We have microbes all over us. They outnumber host cells by about 10 to 1. From the time we are born, our first breath of air, the canal we traveled through, and the hands that gripped our tiny heads and drew our shoulders from our warm wombs, we are introduced to our first symbiont relationships. Tiny bacteria take up residence on our skin as we are cradled, in our mouths as we nurse or take the bottle, and most importantly, in our gut where they flourish and set the stage for all bacteria acts that follow. Within the first three years of a child's life, the assembly of microbiota that establishes itself from early postnatal exposure determines the overall evolution of an adult gut microbiome. It is said that we are ten parts microbe and one part human, and that's counting microbial cells as the unit. If we count unique genes, uh, then the difference is a factor of a hundred. We are only one percent human in terms of unique genes. Two dominant divisions of microbiota inside the human gut are the bacteroidetes and the firmicutes, which comprise over 95% of the entire colony. Another small percentage are two less dominant divisions called actinobacteria and proteobacteria. But overall, a human gut can contain up to hundreds of species belonging to different genera of anaerobic bacteria. Communities and families can share similar population combinations. However, generally, the combination of predominant species are host-specific, meaning that even twins have dissimilarities in their microbial makeup. The flora of gut microbes can fluctuate under stress, illness, diet change, and malnutrition, but they are, for the most part, consistent throughout a human's life. The human microbiome is a set of microbial communities that have co-evolved with us and we with them um, and have become part of the human landscape. It is um, an extension of self. They provide to us untold functions that we don't have the means of executing. We're born deficient in our ability to digest certain kinds of foodstuffs. For example, the complex polysaccharides of plants. We, we can't manage those very well. Our microbes provide us the means of taking advantage. They also help us manage lots of other encounters with the environment. These relationships are symbiotically beneficial to both species, and in some cases they are commensal, providing benefit to one group without harming the other. Their main functions include metabolic, trophic, and protective roles. Resident bacteria provide a barrier effect in the colon, creating a resistance to invasive pathogens that cause infection and illness. This also applies to opportunistic bacteria that are living in the gut but have restricted growth abilities. Disruptions in this ecological balance, such as from the use of antibiotics, can trigger an overgrowth of harmful bacteria, such as Clostridium difficile, which can cause severe diarrhea and other intestinal diseases. We've been asking volunteers to, to take an antibiotic even though they didn't really need it. We do it for short periods of time. We, we watch them before, we watch them after, and we're now doing second exposures a half year later. And the bottom line is, maybe not surprisingly, far more members of the microbial communities of the human body experience a severe um, impact. They're decimated. We need to respect our evolution and the synergies within our foods and microbiota. If they are starved, they cannot do their job to protect us, and this in turn leaves us vulnerable to disease, illness, malnutrition, and higher mortality rates. The advantages of gut microbiota include contributing to the functions of metabolism, digestion, and physiology, and we in turn provide them with a warm, safe, and nutrient-rich environment for colonization. They also supply us with vitamins, chemicals, and minerals we wouldn't be able to utilize from our foods without the bacteria's help to break them down into their constituent parts that the human body can process. Some gut microbiota have been shown to synthesize vitamins, including vitamin K, thiamine, biotin, riboflavin, folate, and anthocyanic acid. 
One interesting finding by scientists is that the molecular structure of vitamins made by bacteria was not identical to the dietary supplement forms of vitamins, which means that nutritionally, we cannot simply take vitamin supplements in place of whole foods. It is a dynamic relationship and one that was, up until recently, highly underrated. By understanding the synergism of food, microbiota, and humans, we can learn to appreciate and respect these symbiotic relationships.